Hi. Um, today I'm going to talk about policing and the law. Um, in the 1980s I had a brief uh, employment uh, as a civilian with the police in Wales. Um, I think at, as far as I know at that time there were two uh, civilians em em employed by the Aberystwyth Police. Um, one of which who was like a, a clerk I suppose um, was on maternity leave and, and the handyman replaced her and I was the replacement for, for the handyman while the other one was on maternity leave. My my jobs were, were quite varied really. Um, I had I, I was um, I had a, a card uh, to drive police vehicles and I took them say to the garage uh, if they had to be repaired um, or with the post, uh, the internal secret post to go from uh, Aberystwyth to Kamal and I went there once a week uh, in, a, in a police car to deliver the security post and bring stuff back from there as well. Um, I had to fill the car, keep the cars full of with, with petrol. I had to collect the the rubbish, empty the rubbish bins, and burn. The, we had an incinerator, uh, which I had to burn any uh, the papers and stuff that, that that were thrown out because nothing could go into the waste in case it was found. It had it all had to be burnt. Um, the only burning that I didn't do was was when they were destroying drugs. The, then the police officers uh, did that themselves. Um, sometimes I was driven around by the police, uh, the police officers, um, say to go and fetch a car back from somewhere. They, they had to take me to the place it had to come back from, so that I could drive it um, drive it back. A slightly surprising thing is I found that they always quite severely exceeded the speed limit even though the, the, where they were going was of, um, there was no particular rush, it wasn't any kind of emergency, they just did it as a routine. Um, generally speaking I'm not trying to say that they, they, they weren't um, relatively, uh, as far as I knew, uh, honest and, and were there to uphold the law but they clearly didn't see that speeding applied to them and I always thought that well Speeding is dangerous. That's why it's against the law. And yet they do it unnecessarily. Do they think it's not dangerous? Well, I suppose they thought they were specially trained and they had cars with operated brakes, and that made it okay. Uh, not a big deal, but I couldn't just mention it. I, I do remember a couple of other things. I remember them uh, being very proud of themselves because, or one particular person was then for. Um, uh, waiting carefully for some hippie, as he called him, uh, to collect his dole money so that he could confiscate the dole money as he as he uh, arrested him. And he, well, I suppose they do have to put up with a lot, in all fairness. Um, but they did sort of develop, as I suppose you would, a, a sort of. I, I was working with them, so I was treated very well. I have to say. I really would say I was, uh, with, um, with a surprising amount of respect really if you like, then given that they were long serving police officers and I was sort of just some temp uh, in the lowest job, they're, they're, they're very good to, the, to, to their own, but they did have a, a sort of, I remember them having sort of considerable contempt for the miners, um, this was shortly after the, the miners strikes and they'd been sent up there to um, well, to stop them stopping the coal from being delivered or whatever. Um, I suppose inevitably you, you develop that attitude, don't you, that we're us and, and they're them. And at least verbally there's a tendency to uh, um, to treat the other's side with, with, with disrespect. Um, but on the whole, I, I found them perfectly pleasant people. They were just in that situation, if you like. Um, in the same way that now, um, 
Clover is is in a civilian job with 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 the police, and really has nothing but 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 praise to do for, for the the officers and um, and indeed the civilian workers, uh, and how well, you can see from what, from things described how hard they're their job is um, a lot of it dealing with with people un under the influence of drugs behaving highly unreasonably because they're under the influence of drugs um, not an easy job let's be fair and I must say that I've never heard her speak with any sort of contempt um, for, for, for for the public or the police um, admiral position I, I, I have to say though that that um, from from being a in the the nineteen sixties, as in heartbeat, then if you like, um, the whole of of the policing service was was run by properly trained policemen and women, um, and increasingly it, it it's been run by by civilians. Now, on one level, this is reasonable. The, um, now, Clover is is, is um, a senior custody officer, I think it's called. has to look has to look after people in 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 police custody, uh, and given very very strict rules, you have to check on this person this often, and you're in trouble if you don't, and you have to do this and you have to do that, and and gradually over time, uh, become um, steadily um, fewer and fewer staff. Uh, to deal with 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 the, with the number of, uh, of people, and they've coped with this by increasing the, um, the 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 amount of jobs that the non um, senior officers that they have to take on this little bit of what senior officer did before um, before um, it, it, because in order to cope, you all have to kind of do everything a bit more. And this is now uh, being used um, with the forthcoming privatization handing over to probably G4S. Uh, that they're trying to get contracts signed to say, well, you, you're, you're, you're now doing more or less the same job as the non senior officers. So um, we're going to just grade you all the same and pay you the rate for the non senior officers. Um, but of course you'll be kept on. Uh, well, actually, um, it's not fair. <laughs> it is as simple as that. If you train the others to do more, more um, things, they sh they might be entitled to more. But the ones that are already doing all the all the different things, taking on all the responsibilities, um, shouldn't get a reduction in, in in pay for doing what they've all done for years and have got even more experience than ever before. There's no there's no it's just a trick um, in order to get a better uh, a better deal for, for G4S on privatization and somebody no doubt somewhere along the line is benefiting from this and I don't suppose it's us uh, or the workers uh, or indeed um, the, the people that have been arrested either um, fewer staff makes it more difficult to actually care for them I mean they do need caring for it in most cases in all honesty, um, so I just thought it would have me say there. I don't know what will actually happen in the end, but it, it, it's a sort of microcosm of what's happening with the public services in general as, you, as they're handed over to to a private concern. The workers are pressurised into accepting um, inferior terms. There aren't quite enough staff to do the job properly, so whoever's being served. Um, by um, the service uh, get gets um, an inferior service, so at least all this is supposed to be saving money. So where the, where does the money go? And you, some of it clearly goes to whoever owns the shares in G4S or the like, whoever it happens to be. Clearly, it doesn't it, and not only now but into the indefinite future um, doesn't seem to be a particularly good thing so on this point I mentioned one other legal thing that seems to be going around a lot now and that is this idea of lawful rebellion you'll see 
uh, on the thing there, the uh, various pictures of barons. This is um, a follow-on from, from the Magna Carta, which basically gave the barons right to uh, oppose uh, the king and uphold common law. Um, and people have been invited now to uh, uh, send a, a letter, an oath of allegiance to the to the barons. Um, there still are barons, and life barons, uh, hereditary barons, and barons of England when it was England, barons of Great Britain when it became united with Scotland, and uh, so on. Uh, uh, it's changed over the years, but. There are many, many barons that still exist, and there was um, an event in 2001 where, where a, a sufficiently large group of barons got together to uh, protest that the Queen uh, wasn't upholding her coronation oath, if I understand it correctly. Essentially, she does have some duties, which I don't quite claim to understand, but they, she isn't supposed to just sign whatever the Parliament does. She's sort of like one of the, the balancing um, uh, of, so that all power isn't in one place. There's, the, there's the, the commons, there's the lords, and there's the queen, and clearly the barons, uh, part of the part of the House of Lords, I suppose, have a certain degree of, of uh, power, and they think that she hasn't correctly fulfilled her role, thus invalidating um, the laws that she signs. Now, I don't claim to understand this, know if this is correct or not. What I would say is. The, the fact that there's a campaign going just shows yet another level of the dissatisfaction of the subjects um, or citizens as they seem to now be called um, with the way things are being run. So on that note, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll say bye.